Stugatz, I can't begin to tell you how much I love that as college sports gets all out in the open where you realize, wait, if you want the Kansas Kansas State guard, it's going to cost you 400 grand a year in a car. <laughs> as everything goes thrown out, gets thrown out in the open, I can't uh, tell you how happy it makes me that Miami is right in the middle of all of the mess. All of it. But we'll get to that in a second. As you just had over the weekend, Isaiah Wong, I I read quotes from Isaiah Wong's agent saying that Wong expects to be treated like the leader of an Elite Eight team. He should. And Ruiz is saying, I will not renegotiate. And these are not the terms that you normally (laughs) associate with college sports. Miami's always been in the middle of it. Now we just know. I mean, I know, it's great. But that, it's going to be great to see all of this collapse. The entire structure of amateurism of NCAA injustice is cloaked in the beauty of College Saturdays. The business of it, when Isaiah Wong's agent is saying, we expect you know, when you've got a guy who just got here 10 minutes ago that we don't know anything about who's just spilling money all over the place with something called Life Wallet, yep. bought a Kansas State guard and is now saying we don't renegotiate like he runs the program. We've given him the program. You realize that? I love that Wong puts himself in the transfer portal and Ruiz is response to that is he's under contract (laughs) i mean that is amazing even just the phrase like the beginning of the story is isaiah wong's agent that would not have existed or i guess maybe it would have been like Bagman before it's something like that. i love seeing it all out in the open i love that miami gets to be at the center of the change i'm sure i won't love it so much when sanctions come down because they'll try and make up some rules along the way or somebody is trying to pick pay in cryptocurrency and their money's not real and we've got we're now just allowing (laughs) all the nevin shapiros to run all over campus and do whatever they want because they can like ruiz is being treated like he is the owner of the university of miami athletic program is nevin sitting in prison saying what really he just, now it's he, legal he, he just got out recently but he's like fraud is vogue now i could just make a podcast and i'd be in the top 10 on on crime and they do a documentary on me and i'd have appearance fees like the tinder swindler going to nightclubs all over the world that's a good idea i mean seriously that's uh put it on the poll guillermo was nevin shapiro just way ahead of his time and being a rat fink snake <laughs> I'll get to that in a second, but I have to start with Billy. Your baseball team is loaded with arms. Like they've got just uh, Luzardo is going out there and throwing 99 from the left side. And uh, you've got this, this Max Meyer in the minor leagues, who is, I think, the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp, I believe, is one of the great nicknames in sports. Awesome. The, the Jumbo Shrimp. And he's going to be, like, Luzardo is going to be fighting for a fifth, spot, a fifth spot on this rotation. Yeah, they're good. The bats, eh, a bit Ooh. inconsistent. But they're good, Dan. I, Dan, I've been telling you. I've been telling you forever. This team is for realsies. <laughs> I feel like they're going to make a deep run. Not like these other two teams in town. You know what I mean? boy. Deep run. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's something going on though with Jazz. There is something going on with Jazz. Because he, and Donnie, Donnie and loves the, the righty lefty matchup. But you love Birdie though. He's he's, nah, he's not, got some big hits. I mean, Birdie is like he's Jazz a fine Chisholm little is player. a star. There are like five of them. Well, but don't I know me with Birdie? <laughs> like, I mean, he's on it, stupidity it, this week. I only bring stars on stupidity. <laughs> I know what Jazz is. You know. <laughs> So Jazz kind of finds himself in a platoon where uh, against lefties he yeah, seems to be getting nice. benched a little like often. Like so far, has he started against a lefty yet? Jeremy Jerbear has Jazz started against a lefty yet this year? All right, he's on it. He he uh, has thank started you, Chris. against lefties. I'm just thinking out loud. Jeremy's such a Marlins room. guy that I just assume him to know all these off the top okay. of his head. Right. Jeremy, but, but you sit. bypassed Billy and went uh, That's straight Jeremy, to Jeremy. Do me a favor. I mean. Come sit in this seat here. If he's going to say Jer Bear and shout to a corner of the room where there's not a microphone like an amateur, we might as well get you on the air so you can talk Why to him. Why doesn't Lewis get that same respect? Because he doesn't have information that's valuable. Wow, well, jeez. Depends yeah. on who you talk to, right? Yeah, quote yeah. Tony, what the you, fuck does go that ahead, mean? Put, put, Lewis on, put Lewis in a microphone, see how he does with Jazz Chisholm and whether he's a star or not, or what Ber- Birdie's splits are. Hey, you never know. I mean, perhaps Lewis is a big Marlins fan. Mm-hmm. So so after head. being benched there against most lefties this year, yesterday there was a lefty on the mound, and he, Jazz had a stomach issue. Yeah, I don't believe it. 
So I Yesterday mean, it, there was a righty on the mound. Well, on Saturday, God damn it, Jerry Bear. Yeah. See, okay, you invited uh, Jeremy, this. Let me go to you. That's why you went to him. Good I mean, coverage, Chris. Appreciate you breaking down the Marlins in a way that a great only start. you can. Way to give All the my facts are right over. except which day of the week okay, it was. Okay, let's give the microphone over to somebody who sounds competent and from the Whittingham School of Broadcasting. Jeremy, please tell me what's interesting about the Jazz Chisholm rise to stardom. Just, as before he's, we get to this, take this with a grain of salt because he gets paid by the Marlins. So. <laughs> Paid by Bally, yeah, who gets okay. paid by the yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. However, the time we're cutting this up real quick. That <laughs> amateurs here. Jazz Jared. Chisholm yeah. is on stupidity. You said I skipped right over that. Yeah, superstar. He's on stupidity this week. I yep. thought I thought you were saying Birdie. Birdie Jazz. was on nope. stupidity. Nope. That's how I Birdie. heard it as well. Yeah. I was okay. like Birdie, huh? Yeah. Okay, I thought you, you know what? Birdie's, Birdie's banned from stupidity. What? Yeah. Wow! Until Jazz starts getting his respect, we're not going to bring Birdie onto stupidity to take Jazz. Stugatz is a lefty host. Yeah, I stand with you, Billy. I mean, I do. Mm. All right, I stand with Jeremy. Uh, tell me uh, something that sounds informed on the Marlins as, a mo as opposed to that dribble that just came out of Chris Cody on a Monday morning. So Chris Cody is right. Jazz Chisholm, yes! Jazz Chisholm Jr. is a, a star Thank either you. already or in the making. Uh -huh. In terms of a 162-game pace, him, he's on pace for a 40-40 season with 30 triples. Like, he's been unbelievable. Yeah, but, well, he never plays, so. but when he gets sat against lefties, <laughs> the splits show that John Birdie has been tremendous. And and John Birdie actually like has an OPS over a thousand this season in playing mostly against lefties. It's a limited sample at -bats. size. But what they're trying to do is do what the Rays do and all these other teams and say, hey, we have 12 good players. We might as well play all of them. But the reality is Jazz Chisholm is a superstar and he should be playing every I, single day. The, the Stugatz, you have heard me talk about how much has changed with these front offices trying to win in the margins. Everyone now knows the secrets of the numbers. So your advantages have to be very thinly sliced if you don't have a salary advantage. And what Jeremy is telling you is the Marlins have decided that setting birdie up in positions that are more favorable against more favorable pitchers turn him at 100% better than Jazz Chisholm mm. would be according to the probabilities. I wouldn't agree with that, but what they're trying to do is just a math equation. 100% mm. of birdie against pitchers that he's going to be good against is going to be better than 100% of Chisholm against pitchers that are tough. So sit Miguel Rojas, who has been a yes. disaster this season Thank so you. far. Like, don't keep taking Jazz out of the lineup. There's plenty of Thank struggling players players on this team that you can play instead of him. Miguel? Brian Anderson at third base. Right. I know he's hot the last two games, but there's a birdie can play almost anywhere on the field. But I, the I agree with the lefty righty thing with Donnie, except for jazz, put jazz out there every day, every other position on the field, do your righty lefty thing. All you want. Totally fair. But what they're doing with birdie is the right thing. I mean, you can't argue the numbers. It's 25 at bats, but you cannot argue the numbers. They're playing. They're benching the wrong person. It is five, okay, it's five games though. It's like five games. Okay. 25 at bats is nothing. So I understand that, but, but but it's nothing. It's five it's games. It's what he has right now. Okay, but what he has is you keep doing this, you're going to make your star unhappy. He's already been on social media. You got a generational cultural disconnect between the manager and him. Pinstripe Donnie. No, no, uh, you know, everybody gets a haircut. He's playing modern baseball, trying to keep his own job. Well, Jazz has blue hair, so I don't think this is right. still the haircut situation. I, no, what I'm saying is that Mattingly comes from that. He's Donnie Baseball. I mean, Man. and Jazz Chisholm is not is very much not that. And to Billy's point, this is why I was talking in the coffee shop with the police officers about Miguel Rojas not being a major league shortstop for many major league teams. And here he's mm. a damn hero because they pay him coupons and band aids. And so he he should be the bridge to better baseball. Like torch that bridge. Whatever better baseball looks like, it's not with him in the center of everything. Even though he's a little local hero because he's one of the few guys they've paid. I mean, he's been good over the past years. He's just not doing great this year. And, like, I mean, they're paying, obviously, Saeed Garcia $12 million and Jorge Soler $12 million, and they're not really doing much so far either. So They have not been very good offensively. You're counting on Anderson. Again. Who's, like, our hottest hitter, like, this last series. So this is not the time to criticize him. But overall, Birdie should be playing over him, I think. No, he's been your best offensive player this year. I wasn't just saying now. I, I mean, other than Chisholm, correct? Well, Has, Brian Anderson. I mean, he's, he's, it, o, OPS numbers. Am I wrong about this? I thought on base and slugging, he was doing better than he usually does. I think of him as a totally mediocre baseball player. Well, he's player. fallen victim to the Donnie thing where he's only starting now against lefties. So he's really not playing against righties. He has a lot smaller well, sample. What's the Donnie thing? The Donnie thing is it's just he lives and dies by this 
righty lefty thing and the thing yesterday was jazz all right so saturday against a lefty i have this right i've confirmed it with jeremy mm. on left again benched because yeah, it's a lefty yeah. in in favor of birdie on saturday and so sunday it's a righty pitcher yeah. jazz mysteriously not, it's not mysterious mm. he had a tummy ache mm. i don't know if it was real mm. i don't know if it Whoa. was fake I'm just saying it, he could be upset. We're speculating now. Isn't on that just young person we, Saturday night in Miami? Possibly that's me speculating. Isn't uh, that isn't fair stum- speculation? Isn't no, stomach ache on a Sunday? As Jazz is becoming a, char- uh, a star and he's got South Florida at his disposal. I don't want to be reckless. That's he had a tummy reckless. ache the day after he was benched, and I don't know. I I'm I'm mad on his behalf, so I'm angry. So I'm thinking he's angry. If I'm angry, how do I get back at him? I got a tummy ache. Stugatz, the, the larger point as we talk about the silliness around this is that Billy has arms to be competitive. He does. I don't know if they'll stay healthy or not, but those are arms. Whoa. What are we doing with that? Why, why are you jinxing Yeah, it, why right? are you jinxing people? Why are you injuring people? Oh, no, Pitching wins championships. That's right. So only, does defense. Yeah. The only reason I was doing that is because they've got a very small margin for error. That's it. They like, have arms in the minors. They can replenish. Like, if they have injuries, they can bring people up. They can bring in Max Meyer. Who the hell knows what's going on with Sixto Sanchez? I mean, that's a mystery every year. Billy, wait a second. Did Derek Jeter do a – did he do a good job? Like putting together a minor um, league he system. Is, here he is wandering well, over. Well, it just dawned on me. Right, I'm wondering, okay. did he? Uh, I mean, should I ask Jer Bear? I mean. Stugatz, the Marlins have benefited from tanking being profitable, sanctioned by the commissioner, allows the Astros to go from worse to they can have some arms. But like, that doesn't guarantee success. Yeah. This isn't no, basketball it, no, or it football. It doesn't guarantee anything, and they haven't had any success yet. They haven't had any. They've got they've they've won their twelve and eight or whatever over twenty games. There hasn't twelve been and any, nine. There hasn't been any real success yet. It's just finally they got a seven game winning streak, and finally you've got something excited to get excited about. Well, I mean, this, they they historically in the past five or six years have had horrible Aprils, and they put themselves in such a hole. That they can never get out of so when they get hot in may and june it's like okay cool now we're back to five games under 500 and then you play 500 the rest of the season and then things fall apart this is the hottest start they've gotten off to in in the month of april in a long time But billy the reason i want to present it to you and the audience is because i believe that your baseball enthusiasm except for that 30 and 31 playoff season for damn near the entire time i've known you that wasn't there gets extinguished Quickly, what was their record? They were over 500. They didn't go in with a losing season, and then they won. And then I know that we like to discredit that, but they won the first round and they beat the National League Central. My larger point being that you Mm -hmm. have not had a lot. And they lost their best hitter, Dan. Don't forget about that. Your care gets extinguished very quickly in Marlin seasons. And I wouldn't say that. I would say my enthusiasm and optimism quickly turns into hate and pessimism. Right, of course you would but say I still it with have the 40 enthusiasm. words where yeah, I was no. saying it with 10. Well, I still, have the, I still have the, you know, the passion. It just becomes misguided, angry passion. Well, the, yeah. re- the but the reason I present it to the audience is because I, you have watched. This is the, the special kind of torture that you have committed, and it's the worst, right? Because it is better as a sports fan to not care at all, to be totally indifferent than to hate your team but not be able to let go because you're addicted. You have watched so many games that don't matter over the last 15 years. To have games at the beginning of the season where you're like, whoa, wait a minute, are we better than the Braves and the Phillies? Are we Are we a team that can compete uh, with our arms and now that the Mets are good again because they're saying Buck Showalter has eh. fixed them when I think it's probably Lindor is back to being a little more Lindor. I think it's the, Stevie the, Cohen the, the, who the, fixed them. Okay. I mean, he spent an ungodly amount That's of money. Correct, but I would right. love for it to I'm be Mets and Marlins. <laughs> Please a, make it Mets and Marlins. I'm a little worried about the Mets. I, you should be. I, I, see, I see a bit of injuries. In their future, because they have older arms and they have injury ridden arms. So I can see that kind of falling. I hope it doesn't. I hope the Mets go deep. That would be hilarious. Well, they're without what the, the best arm in the game in Jacob deGrom. Like they're doing this without him right now, Billy. Like, oh, but what can you count on from him? You can I only. I mean, he's supposed to be back in a couple of weeks. I know, but what can you count on from him? Like uh, don't being you the feel- best pitcher in baseball when he's healthy? Oh, but isn't that last part important it's a very important but i'm just telling you that he's injured now when he's coming back in a couple of weeks so the mets are off to this kind of start without the best pitcher in baseball let's not turn on each other's two guys right. let's form an you. alliance yes. the mets and the marlins let's just run this division be done with those stupid braves and be done with the stupid phillies and the stupid nationals mm-hmm. you know what i mean i'm with you <laughs> the I mets see. had a no hitter this weekend also that wasn't a no hitter it doesn't count yeah yeah it doesn't <laughs> that's not a no hitter give me a break get out of here no hitter, team, team no hitters or not no hitters? Those are not nope. no hitters. Okay. No. Those nope. are not no nope. hitters. Nope. Those are no nope. hitters to you? 
<laughs> yeah, they, that you're ridiculous. Gave up zero hits. No, you're that's ridiculous. not a no hitter. Five guys no. gave up zero hits. Yeah, no, right. That's still yeah. impressive. One guy no, zero hits no, 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 no. in a baseball game. One no. guy go the distance and give up zero hits. Exactly. The way it's almost AJ more impressive. Burnett did it. At right. this point, one guy going the distance is more impressive than a five guy no hitter. Just having a guy pitch a complete game is more impressive to me than a no hitter. No I doubt. would love to go and watch a complete game. I don't even give a shit if they gives up twenty runs. I just want to see someone finish a game. You know what I found out this weekend? You want to hear this, what? Dan? I don't know if you're familiar Not with this. Not really, but is it going to stop you? Don Sutton. Familiar? <laughs> Ever heard Sutton? the name? I yeah. love Don Sutton. Don Sutton. All the famer. Well, yeah. Apparently, he used to be the strikeout leader in the history of the Dodgers Some or something. Some of the best hair in the yeah. history of baseball. Oh, Clayton, beautiful hair. Clayton Kershaw passed him in terms of career strikeouts for the Dodgers, right? So now Clayton Kershaw is the all-time leader. I heard a stat listening to, I don't even know what it was, some radio station driving around. Don Sutton had like 150 something complete oh, yeah. games in his oh, career. Yeah. Oh, Clayton yeah. Kershaw, I believe, has 20. Yes. Yep. 150 no, something Billy, out of 500 Billy, games we, were complete we treated, games. Do you it, know what that is? It's stupid. It's not scientific. Well, what does that mean? Hall of he's fame. fine. Yeah. I mean, he's right. a Hall of Famer. He seems to be fine. doing just yep. fine. Yes, mm. I'm at the grocery store. He was fine. Yep. <laughs> he pitched for 23 years yeah. despite throwing yep. oh, my God. 178 Woo, career complete games, 156 of them with the Dodgers. Does he still have two arms? There were three so. no-hitters going this weekend oh, all please. at the same time. Enough. Two of them were broken up by home runs. We don't care anymore, do we? <laughs> well, there was, one, there was one the other day that, that was the uh, the Rays actually went through nine innings of no-hit baseball. And, and then in the 10th, right, the whole thing got ruined. The whole thing That's fell a no-hitter for me. No, because it was 80 pitchers. They put in like one guy for two innings and then three innings and then one inning and then point two innings and then point one innings and then point four innings. And I don't even know how it was possible, but it happened. And uh, this is what I love, that as we do all of this stuff, right, because they're micromanaging the hell out of it because they're trying to take every at-bat and make it a probability with somebody throwing 100 miles an hour out of the bullpen. But I sent Billy and Stugat this from ESPN.com about how it is and why it is the Mets are at the top of the division after a year of failure. And the headline is, in quotes, play better. In quote, the simple message the Mets are using to flip the script. So Buck Showalter <laughs> has gotten in there, and he's the way he's changed what's happening with the Mets is he walked into the clubhouse and he just told them, you know what, guys, play better. Genius. He's not wrong. I mean, keep it simple. Exactly. K A S S. Keep it simple. Stupid. <laughs> it's, it's just, worked. I mean, he just yawned. By the way, it's well, insulting me. I saw that yawn, Woody. That's. So it's, yes. it's, yeah, the, the local hour and video is going to catch me visibly yawning. Because of what? Minutes. It's Marlins? Can I? Uh, yeah. You got no. a heat game. You got the Panthers. And Wait, the playoffs. Can you, can we need time. to set the table. Lads, There's time. For what is an unbelievable week in South Florida sports. But listen sports. to poor oh, pleading Billy from lads. the corners. Yeah, Billy wants no. to talk about his team. He got a few minutes to talk about his team. There was a seven-game winning streak. We were talking. To, and by the way, they had a great crowd on Saturday night or Sunday. 29K. Yeah, 29,000. I've never 000. seen that tweeted out as much. It's Win crazy. Winning, winning will lure them. If a hot young well, arms, it's UM night also. Uh, but, but and concessions I've heard is still a bit of a I'm, obstacle we're overcoming. Can they make Saturday nights in Miami a thing? No. Have you seen that? Have you seen the LED lights, Dan? <sighs> I miss Need the I days when they had uh, DJ Khaled and Pitbull doing concerts. After Super the Saturdays, game. you mean? Is it over? Is it, it that'll never happen again? Well, I mean, I hope it happens again. Now it's advanced Saturdays. Where they like tackle advanced stats on Saturdays. Ooh. Advanced just, Saturdays? <laughs> yeah. That's, when I heard that's them, gonna them gonna and I like that, I mean, what a bad <laughs> idea winning, that is. Winning him just did winning math Ooh, Saturdays. Counting on a Saturday night. Oh ruining a weekend that's with math. The best. <laughs> Jesus. No, no, no. The best Give part. Me of, a day off. The I best mean. part about this is when I learned about this was during a Tommy Hutton broadcast. Oh. I, it might have been during the preseason or oh spring training. It, Tommy Hutton was on the call, and as. Uh, the 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 play by play guy announces, oh, we're going to be doing advanced Saturdays, and like Tommy it. Hutton goes, I'm still waiting for someone to explain to me what war means. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I'm with Tommy. I don't like it. Imagine telling kids it's homework Saturday. Come watch the game and do homework, please. Get out of here. <laughs> Tommy Hutton's still shouting from the beyond on the fringes of the Marlins broadcast. Bleep yourself and your analytics as Donnie sits here and decides by the shit. Well, he's waiting for people to explain it to him, too, because that guy doesn't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> by the way, Stu guys and I had a talk over the weekend. Well, really over like last week or the week before, Dan. I think we're Joe Madden guys now. 
Ah, uh, we are. Yeah. Genius. <laughs> mm -hmm. He has made some of the most ridiculous moves. Now, no one is looking at those moves that he made, except for Mike Trout, who's looking at him strangely. But they both worked, both the crazy moves that he made. They won those games yeah. when he made the moves, and now he has the Angels in first place. Yeah. Dan, they needed a jolt, and the genius Joe Madden, mm -hmm. he gave them a jolt. Yeah, big Joe Madden, guys. I mean, he intentionally walked in a run. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, Isn't he the reason why Don? Donnie is the way no. he is. He started all this no. shit. No, so lefty righty, lefty righty. No, but we're we're on to Joe, and I think that's why we've become big Joe Madden He's guys. He's good. Yeah, Joe, Try, you're trying to make it, get him on Stu Potter. No, 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 it. no, please oh. no. No. The thing with Joe Madden that I've Perhaps. discovered that I think is going on is we think, or, or at least I think, I know how Stugatz feels about this, that Joe Madden just turns to his bench coach, whoever his bench coach is, and he just goes, "Hey." Watch this. And then he just does some crazy <laughs> shit to see if anyone questions it ever. And then it works out. It's like, whoa, Joe is a genius. But it's really him just saying, like, let's see what I can do and see if yeah. it costs us the game or not. It doesn't matter yeah, okay, at this so point. You've, got, you've, you've turned him in 15 now. 15 and 8 first place. You've, you've yeah, turned I mean. him now into Jolt Madden. And, and what you're saying is he comes out to make a pitching change and he's got, like, fire in his in his hands like an illusionist. <laughs> like, watch this. I, I'm going to show yeah. you how I'm going to make the Angels all about to, me. To see if it works. And, and it has worked so far where Donnie Baseball, on the other hand, intentionally walks someone to get to or intentionally walk someone with a 100 batting average this weekend <laughs> for whatever reason. And the next hitter hit a three run homer. Right. So it didn't quite work out. Mm -hmm. Whittingham, let's transition. Billy, I promise you, we will we will continue. More to Madden? We will tune in to the Marlins. Talk? Uh, well, <laughs> just keep it here for a while. Don't have a long losing streak. They're competitive. They play, play. That's beyond my control, but I'll try my best. <laughs> okay, but I see your enthusiasm, and I want to feed that enthusiasm. I don't want the Marlins to get extinguished by what's about to happen. The Panthers just got the President's Cup. They were they were better in Please, get the, Lord Stanley. Oh, go ahead. Okay. What? Exactly. Yeah. Oh. President's Cup I is dangerous. This. No. President's, no usually, this is a you big rest deal. on your laurels. President's yeah. Cup's a big deal. No, it's not a... No. You want to win Lord Stanley, or at least make a deep run. The President's Cup is... It's cute, but it's not for winners. It is cute. It's a regular season award. Mm -hmm. We have we have bigger prizes that we're looking exactly. at. Exactly. You know? But the winner of the President's Cup has not made the Stanley Cup in many, many years. Wow. Yeah. That's Damn a stat. It. I know. But also... This, that's an enormous achievement. No. I had like no. a slew of Stugatzes no. in my mentions when I said we need to value these regular season awards. No, that's so the much soccer more. coming out in no. you, though. No, it, that's it, you I mean, just it, doing no. a soccer no, thing. It, no, but it is. But like to beat every team, every night. The Panthers had a 13 game winning streak during March, and they like gained three points worth of ground on the Colorado Avalanche. During that period, they still had to keep winning in order to win this President's Cup. This is an enormous achievement for a franchise that yes, has done no. nothing my entire but existence. No. But do it in the postseason, Stugatz, and you heard Billy's no there, is you're right, Whittingham, of course. Selfish. It, it means something that over a representative sample size, Irresponsible. You were the best team in hockey. Over a representative sample. The, the, right. The reg now, the regular season isn't the measurement, though. This is not how we've ever done it. It's not how Stugatz will ever do it. There is no reason to celebrate anything in the regular season. No. What, what happens is, is this became a selfish award. Let's win the President's Cup, where what you could have been doing is when you have it locked up, you start resting some of your players, make sure everybody's healthy. Instead, we're putting people out there, risking injuries, and risking this potential run for Lord Stanley's Cup. Only eight teams have won the President's Cup and the Stanley Cup. Cursed. And I believe the last team to do it was in 2013, and that was the Blackhawks. I don't even want it. Give it back. I mean, Woody, I understand what you're saying, but it is a bit of a curse, you know? I mean, but that, but it's because the hockey playoffs are random. It's not because it's a bad thing to win the President's Trophy. In a decade. Yeah. Yeah. It's a President's Trophy, by the way. I feel like Roy's going to listen to this and yell at us. But uh, yeah. I mean, but you can't, you can't pick and choose the stats that you like and what's significant and what's not. We gave you the numbers and said that if you win this cup, you don't go on and win the Stanley Cup. And you're just saying, like, well, it's just but random. That's, that's correlation, nah. not causation. Nah. Right? Unless, unless you're saying that going... To win every regular season game, you know, saps your energy for the playoffs and yeah. being able to go four rounds. You can make that argument, but I don't think a consistent level of excellence is anything but predictive of good play of playoff success. In the last 20 years, 18 times, the President's Cup winner has not made it to the Stanley Cup. Mm. Okay, Math. but if that's, if that's how so you guys do. So there's nothing it, worth... They're either due or a 100% chance that it happened, or a 10% chance that it happens, Math. Right. Billy, as a hypocrisy, you don't notice that the Marlins pandemic playoff season is something you wave around as a great success. But well, the, you guys do that with the Heat. So, what do we do with the Heat? 
the pandemic shortened season, you wave it around and saying well, no, we made it to the I, NBA what, Finals. What, What's what, the difference? What I've wa- I don't wave that around. I don't know what that bubble season was. I wave around the last 20 years of the Heat being the program in <laughs> town that matters, the only one capable of consistent excellence. It's also 14 playoff wins to two. In that in that particular instance, but I, I'm it's just not, it's not I, apples to apples but comparison. I, I am I am oh. siding with Whittingham on the idea of they just had their best season ever and the best regular season in the sport, and it's not going to mean anything because Billy's skepticism has been earned by this franchise. Oh, I mean, what I think doesn't matter. I know that it doesn't matter. Oh no, but I believe the casual hockey fan. Like I'm this- just saying, you if you guys come in here and you're saying this is a great team, then like congratulations. Yeah, we won this nice little fancy trophy, but we have deeper. Oh, no. We have deeper goals here. Your point, can we all just like, we're doing this thing where we're yelling at each other. We all agree. We all agree. Exactly. Everybody agrees if they lose in the first round, very disappointing season. But this achievement, something they've never done in franchise history, is really cool. Yes. So that's it. Can I revel revel in watching ESPN Plus on a Thursday night on my iPad, lying in bed, rooting against the Colorado Avalanche? Can I just enjoy that for 30 seconds without somebody yelling at me, doing it, do it in the playoffs? But also, they desperately need to win a first round series. I mean, they do. If they <laughs> lose in the first You're back. round. Yeah. Oh my god! Just about game one. What about ga- if they lose game one? Oh, if they lose, oh, yeah, no, it's no, over. I'm it's over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. I'm a and of and hockey is cruel this way. And they've got the reason that you fear is because they've got the weaknesses you cannot have this time of year. Like this is when you talk about playoff hockey or playoff basketball. Either one, they, they, everyone who plays it will tell you it's an entirely different game. It's just everything is more physical, and what you worry about with the Panthers is you know good and well that they can win the cup. They're good enough to do that, and they're good. They can they can lose in five games in the first round because all of a sudden it's playoff hockey that buries them, and they're not scoring six goals a game anymore. It's Ovechkin. I mean, <laughs> you know what's interesting though is that we don't feel confident about Sergei Bobrovsky going I into do. the playoffs. And yet, it feels like you, he's had a good year. Right. His advanced analytics are actually amazing. He's fourth in the league. There's this really good website called Money Puck, which does expected goals and saves above expected. He's fourth in the league in that stat. And yet, I'm still kind of waiting for the Panthers to be 4 0 down after the first period of the first well, game. Well, because is, it, is this a product of he's been very good, but they play such a wide open style that they leave him more vulnerable? It's not even defensive deficiencies. It's just they've decided we're going to try and outscore you because we believe we're more talented than you are at scoring. And so we're going to make the game more fun, more exciting. We're going to leave our goalie exposed. And the advanced analytics suggest that given what he's facing, he's doing a good job even as he allows three or four goals. Yeah, I mean, they play with a certain flair. Like, they come out of at the beginning of a game, and they're trying to score. They're, like, trying shit. They're probably firing some dangerous passes that lead to bad giveaways at the beginning of games. They also have enormous confidence that they, if they do give up the first goal, that that's not a problem. And so that's a certain freedom that you play with at the beginning of games, which sometimes it means you're down 3 nothing after 10 it's minutes. It's not playoff hockey. No, it's not. I, I mean... I, I appreciate the stats and this this point of view. If you're giving up three or four goals in a hockey game, you're not doing a very good job. A goalie should not be giving up four goals or three goals a hockey well, the, game. The, but the stat if you're, giving that, up, if you're giving up good chances, then that's not really on the goaltender. Yeah. Winning, Winningham's stat earlier this year was they've scored six or more goals more often than they've been held under three this this season. Like that's they, but giving up four goals a game is not that's, that's not, not a good. great goal. Yeah, that's not a good. What goal are you not. guys bringing to this? Like obviously, right? I mean, isn't that obvious? Well, you, no, you guys are saying that he's a, he's the fourth best goalie. He gives a, and don't pay attention to the three or four goals, but he's a good goalie. Like, no, don't give well, up four goals. This team historically has been bad defensively. So, yeah. like in years past, I don't know about the stats this year, but in years past, they would give up a lot of goals. But it was their defense that was thought of as more of a weakness than their goalie. Cody, are you swirling with delight here? Because we're headed here toward poor Billy and seven-game winning streaks getting drowned by the other teams, and it's going to make him hate these teams all the more than he already does. The, I don't care. The Heat and the and the Panthers. Uh, but we're trying – There, if this team doesn't lure you in, Billy, in hockey, you can't be lured in. Like, I'll be there when we get, you know – deeper the thing is is that this playoffs is gonna be like two months long and it's like exhausting you know what i mean i only have so much energy i can't give all my energy to the panthers and to the heat and to the marlins so we'll get there show me something show me something hopefully this playoff run is long i don't (laughs) want to get invested just to be you know heartbroken so 
you know, we'll get there. You're telling us if they win a round, then Billy's allegiances will emerge. A no, typical Miami no, like fan. Two rounds at least. Yeah. <laughs> How many rounds are the, the Stanley Cup playoffs? Like four rounds? Yeah. There are four when we rounds, get to, yes. yeah, like the uh, penultimate finals. round, yeah, yeah, then we'll start. Okay, you know. good. Then I'll be all in. Mm-hmm. This week, the Miami Heat and the Florida Panthers, Whoa. actually, the next two weeks, it's will be much. alternating days of playing. 13 so days is the possibility, right? It's too much. Yeah. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday is Heat. Tuesday, what? Thursday, Saturday, Monday is Panthers. I need a break. I need a break. Oh, and then yeah. chuck in a Formula One Grand Prix in the middle of it. Uh, in it my veins. Who cares about that? Dick- uh, well, lots of people. Uh, I think you guys are overstating that. I name think that this them. is just you guys are on Twitter and everybody on Twitter is talking about how much you like Formula One. Yeah. Like we were talking about having a watch party. I, I probably shouldn't say this. We were talking about having a watch party for the Heat. It's like, oh, Formula One's in town. We, it's like, guys, people are going to be watching the Heat of Miami. Okay. Like people are not going to not watch the Heat to watch Formula One. Well, Chris was just, Chris Cody was just slapping his left vein, his left arm. And it made me think of how hard it's going to be. For Jesus Lazardo, who is um, that's fine. Fly under the radar. I'm perfectly fine with this team flying under the radar, and they're going to be flying under my radar because they're going to the West Coast soon. And 9:40 starts. Daddy's not staying up for those. <laughs> None of them. You won't. Oh and no! Will that's you record way too them? Late. How How will your experience be? Because what I was about to say is Lazardo, their fifth starters to guys going into the game yesterday. He had in in the sport. He was striking out more guys, more percentage of guys than anyone else pitching in the sport. Thirty seven point eight percent going into the game and i don't know how you hit him at all if he's going to hit spots like i just don't it seems impossible if this guy's going to go up and down in the zone and actually learn to pitch while we're watching it would seem uh that you've got a you've got somebody who can an obviously electric arm on your hands but you're not going to be able to get in here billy and celebrate your team because we haven't even talked about the heat yet and they start round two tonight uh, with one of these, this, this is a Baba round. This no fun. Yeah, this round's a, this round's a joke. Please, well, Joe and Embiid's not playing. It's gonna be a five game series. Okay. First two games. I yeah. just I want it, but I want to see Harden try to go for fifty again. I try to make it the Rockets for for one night. The series does lose a little juice with Embiid out, with Lowry out, especially Embiid. Yeah. Like it does. It loses a little juice. I'm not saying it's not exciting. But I was a little upset to hear that Embiid's going to miss at least games one and two. But you're not a diehard Heat fan. Like, Mike was doing the thing on Twitter about, I wanted the smoke. I want Embiid. That's That's what I'm saying. As as a Heat fan, I'm going to say it. I'm happy Embiid's. I mean, I don't want him to. I'm not saying I'm rooting for injury. But since the news has come to me, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, man, I really wanted Embiid in there. I couldn't be happier. Listen, I, I I was part of a text chain this week where... Mike Ryan and Mike Schur were both full of shit, and they were both pretending that they want their teams to have this tough road (laughs) to the NBA Finals, and they're both disappointed that the teams that they've played against have had injuries, and bullshit. Everybody wants their team to make it to the Finals, and there's no glory in losing to a team at full strength if you can get to the Finals. I'm sorry. (laughs) I don't believe for a minute that he was devastated that the Nets were missing people and that Mike is devastated that Joel Embiid is out. I do not believe that for a second. And Boston had all kinds of confidence going into that game one because Milwaukee doesn't have Middleton and Milwaukee needs to be at full strength. Their best player, according to you. Yeah, well, you know, they're number one. Their number one was out, and Giannis stepped up from his number two role to lead the way with a massive triple-double. But, I, but you know, the, the Boston fans were confident because of no Middleton, and you've, you were thinking, oh, Milwaukee's got to be at full strength. I'm telling you, Stugatz, Miami Heat better watch that and be careful because if they, wow. they, if they don't have Lowry, just because Whoa. they don't have Embiid, right. it doesn't mean that this is a pop out round as, as Bailey described it. It's not It's not as simple as right. Embiid is out. This, this series not is about over. Culture. He doesn't put, it, it. Right, put, put it on the poll, Billy. Uh, is this a pop out round uh, or is this a watch and be careful round? Because uh, winning him. Do you think that he could lose this round? I don't, but oh, well. no, but, you, but you have to like watch yesterday and go just because an Wait important guy is out no. Wait doesn't a mean second. you're like Kyle Lowry's an important Whoa. piece that's for Miami. Celtics. That's you have the been totally the different. one seed the entire year. Yeah. You have gone President's stretches Cup. of game without Kyle Lowry. The MVP is not playing Stugatz. in games one and two. Whittingham, you're better, uh, Whitting- and they're at home. Mm-hmm. Everything you were saying, White hot. Is correct. Also, though, Whittingham is correct when he says this Heat team this year, if you watched them play without Lowry, it wasn't usually very fluid. And there was a bit of a difference how they played offensively. And you can be subject to to a hardened game 
You it it can I guess. I, I, okay, you cannot you cannot fear it if you want, and that's and that's fine. I I don't necessarily agree with Whittingham's go in, uh, watch and be careful and be see shadows around every corner. This yes, is a sweep. Missing the missing the MVP of the league would obviously be something that nobody wants to encounter. But you guys are shrugging your shoulders and saying, uh, eh, anytime. No problem. And I'm like, eh, they can lose a game pretty easily because they Doc don't make Rivers, any of their Dan. threes. Dan, it's Doc Rivers. Yep. This series is over before mm. it even started. But Come wouldn't on. he get a 3-1 lead first before blowing yes. it? No. no they're no, not no, even no, going to no, give no, him no, that no, courtesy. No. no. Yeah. 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 Not going to happen. What a terrible job. I know it's the obvious take today, and I don't mind making it because it was such a ridiculously <laughs> bad job <laughs> by you, Doc Rivers. When do you ever When do you ever mind making the ridiculously uh, obvious take? I don't know. Go Never, ahead. Give I us guess. the ridiculously I, obvious take. Because how Joel Embiid is in that game. Exactly. When that series is over, that game is over, the series is over, he's the MVP, he's the only shot you have of winning an NBA championship. Championship and how you have him in a game late in the fourth up, quarter, up twenty nine, up twenty nine, Dan. When any coach would take that player out because they realize, hey, I have bigger fish to fry. I'm on to the next round. And this series is over. It. Defended it afterward. You can't by, defend it. Defended it afterward you can't by it. saying their guys were out there too. So what? So what? Well, Who cares were, what Nick Nurse is doing? They were down 30. They had to have their guys out there if they wanted to right. win the game. Yeah, He should it, be fired. It was their last game of the season as well. Uh, one of the things, to guts that we blew past last week and Doc Rivers defending with context and nuance all his 3-1 blown leads, when he said, go back and look at that roster, I was an eight seed, look at that roster, what he's saying, and players hate this so much, oh, we were up 3-1 because I was great. But then we blew the lead because they weren't great. Mm -hmm. Like that when when players notice that stuff yes. when it, because Doc Rivers is so ass covering there and now he's defensive and leaning into and look anybody could get injured in the last four minutes of a game and you're going to arrive not if they're not in you're going to arrive obviously uh, that way not if they're not in. Probably. Somebody could go <laughs> spilling into the stands and hit their knee and you would blame him for not being in the game because why would you put him on the bench where he could get his knee hurt? Because we can criticize anybody getting injured in that situation, uh, even as we understand Anybody could be injured in that situation, but only one guy did, your most important guy. And now it's not only that he's missing the first two games, it's that I don't know what it's like to try and play a playoff game as the MVP under withering criticism when you've got a ligament torn in your shooting hand and now you're going to be playing with a mask as well. And the only thing you get credit for, the only thing, MVP, is if you beat the Heat. It's not coming close to beating the Heat. No. The standard is with your face mask and possibly down 0-2, as everyone expects, Possibly down 0-2, trying to come back as the MVP of the league or alleged, and people will judge you the way you do it. Do better with your torn ligament in your shooting hand, and you're trying to play in a mask. I'll uh, no, I'll I'll go off on Doc Rivers, and I'll continue to do so. It's not going to be as much about Embiid as it will be about Doc Rivers for me. That's just a terrible job, and it's coaching 101. Oh, the series is over. The MVP's out on the court. The other team can't beat us. I take him out. In the event that he gets injured, I don't want him to be injured, so I take him out so he's healthy for the next round, which is far more important than the final three minutes against the Raptors. Why do you think it's the obvious take? Because I don't think anybody in the world would disagree with you. I don't think there's anybody who could defend listening to this the what, what Doc Rivers tried to do which is defend. He's saying they were, it was just the end of a run. They still had their players out, and he realized he bleeped up. Like he, I mean, he, it's not – it's happenstance – Obviously, right, Stugatz? Like, yep. I mean, and, and that could have happened in any one of the quarters, in any one of the games he gets his face shattered, on any one of the plays, given how physically he plays basketball. But it's the disaster scenario for Doc. It's the end of a run, and it's just how it looks, and you can't win any of the arguments after that. Zero. You got. You shouldn't even try. You, you can't win any of well, the arguments trying. because yes. you sound like you're in ass-covering mode because here's the process, and it's being undone. You're a control freak as a coach is. And you've got very little control over anything that happens out there, even though as you call timeouts and call up plays and everything else. But what you do have control over is if you're up 20 and the season's over, you don't have to have your MVP. There's nobody, nobody who would disagree. You don't have to have well, your MVP. Well, that's why it's the there. obvious take. That's what I'm saying. It's the easiest take in the world. It's, you know, it's Monday morning quarterback. It's Doc Rivers. What are you doing? I didn't complain about it while it was happening. I only complained about it after Joel Embiid got that's right. hurt. Right. That's correct. Exactly. And that is yeah. where we win all the arguments. So what did you guys do with uh 
with the Heat being fine, something that I want more of in sports, not less of. So Jimmy Butler makes all sorts of sensual. Uh, he's feeling very good about himself as the Heat uh, took a lead against Atlanta, and he made what was clearly the universal sensual shimmy of straight fucking. And that resulted in a $15,000 fine for him. And then the Heat, Stugatz, the Heat put it on its social media account and the Heat's person got fined $15,000 as well for making a gif out of uh, Jimmy Butler's straight fucking. Jimmy fuck it. That, I, I feel bad. In, in this whole equation, I feel worse for the social media guy. Because or or, or or woman or woman yes. got in trouble for yeah. sure got in trouble for sure and that's a generational gulf I I would say if I'm the Heat I like getting fined for that we're Miami we're sensual but I don't think the Miami Heat uh, the Miami Heat brass <laughs> it's part of the culture even as Pat Riley is a silver <laughs> fox I don't think that uh, an intern there wants to be taught the ways of uh, of fouling up the the corporate image on social media first up I I, I don't think we should keep calling these people interns because the people who run social media have very important jobs. Yeah. They're like probably, big jobs, high right, paying jobs. Right. They're, they're, yes. they're paying a lot of, they're paying a lot of money for it, but that's still one where you start seeing the reaction and you see for putting it on Twitter in the NBA statement about a fine, you're going, Oh no, is this coming out of my paycheck? You think it's coming out of his paycheck or her paycheck? I'd want my Twitter account to be doing that. If I were running a team, get into a little trouble, harmless trouble, uh, get some fines and get the publicity from the fines because, I mean, Miami wants to be a central vacation destination that is, uh, you want it to feel like LeBron when he chose South Beach. And so I wouldn't object to it, but there is a generational gulf here, Stugatz, between the people running these accounts, whether we don't want, we don't need to call them interns, but the people running the heat are not the people running these accounts. I was telling these guys when I came in today, Stugatz, I, w I was at the facility this weekend with my father who wanted to chase down Max Struess right. and kill him with a hatchet. And, Did he? Uh, I don't know. He was oh, looking for okay. Max Struess last I saw him. I suppose this saga will continue. We would have heard about it if he had killed him that publicly. But my father went with a hatchet and a chain to beat the holy shit out of Max Struess for loving, uh, for my mother having a crush on him. Was he covered in blood when he got back to the car? He or? was not. No? Uh, he was okay. furious. Uh, so you can you can see some of those uh, tra uh, the journey on Twitter and on Instagram. But walking into that place, the place that that Riley built the bones uh, of a place that feels haunted when there's no one there, but the basketball team, it feels very much like a military silo where they create a factory of, of sergeants working on these basketball machines all day in order to get them physically right in a way that I think that Lowry and Butler will sit out games because the goal is the conference finals and the finals. Like if, if their team can't make it to the end because Embiid breaks down or Harden is fat, we can have Jimmy Butler sit a game five as a precaution because Jimmy needs to be right so we can get one of those right. 45 games when you're playing Tatum in or, or, or Giannis in the East. And, well, I, I don't like that for Jimmy Butler. Like, you don't you want Boston if you're Miami. I don't think you want Milwaukee. <laughs> you're there already? Like, Milwaukee's won that series? I, and it's not that they've won that series. It's just I don't want Giannis for Jimmy Butler because right. that's okay. not that's, that's not going to go well for right. Jimmy Bam's Butler. assignment, though, isn't it? Um, oh, I just mean Jimmy Butler trying to score in a place yeah. where Giannis exists because he's, anyone trying it, it, to score. It, 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 yeah. It, so it, I, did, did your mind change on that just on the uh, alley oop to himself? Yes. I, Amazing. I, anyone yes. can see that one play and go, oh yes. shit. Yes. No more, more, part of that. Yes, more athletic no part than of that. everyone there. Why does he make it look that easily like it's a nerf hoop? How is he able to play? That's Jason Tatum, who grew two inches over the summer. We didn't even notice it. And he was as tall as Kevin Durant in that last series. Like <laughs> Jason Tatum was as tall as Kevin Durant. And there's Giannis. And you're like, oh my God, something bigger and stronger and faster that throws it off the backboard as Tatum is standing there confused and dunks on his head. He's seven feet tall. I heard I heard that play on the radio, and I was shouting at the radio, what, no part of that? <laughs> no, Boston, no, please? No, thank you. Stigat said that's coming for all the championships. I don't think Golden State, I don't think anybody wants any parts of that. Like, throw it off the backboard and make it look like a Nerf hoop. But they get fined that money, Stugat. and I wonder, as, as the Heat are run by people who are older, who do not have those sensibilities, who I'm sure think Jimmy Butler was a real amateur 
there. Mm -hmm. um, that facility is a place when they, all the people in there, I was telling the guys here when I walked in, they've got like seven or eight Spolstras who have been there 20 or 30 years. And they're all Spolstras. They all came from the video room and all have been like Riley disciples to create what very much feels to God like a military console when they run business ops out of there and when the place is empty and it's just how do we make this factory of Gabe Vincent's and Struces and Duncan Robinson's? How do we put them in this machine that feels like a silo that is different from the rest of the America that surrounds it? <laughs> it's a place I would go if 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 Miami were under attack. It's where I would go to feel safe in really? that in the structure that Riley <laughs> built over there. I just hang out with the eight spos. Well, because, They'll take care of everything. It's like a Navy SEAL team. <laughs> They've got a, a group of guys there who've right. been there for 30 years, and they all learn the spose <laughs> stuff, and they're all wearing the culture shirts because it's a cult. It's a cult in the middle of our city. 100%. The Heat put the cult in culture, no question. But the thing that's interesting to me about the social media thing is that they all view that stuff, I would presume, as obstacles to winning, right? Starting shit on social media with the opposition team is an obstacle to winning, right? So, like, growing uh, growing your Twitter following and your Instagram following, like, what do, I, what do I need to be popular on social media for? I just want to win. And so all of this stuff probably lands at their desk going, what are we doing causing problems for our organization by tweeting out a gif of... Jimmy but Butler pantomiming sex. I told you guys at the beginning of this to imagine coming across David Stern's desk, J.R. Smith, hey, you want to get the pipe, nude women in the hotel room. <laughs> and David Stern looking at, his, at, at what's being brought to him by a young Adam Silver and being like, the hell am I supposed to do with this? I'm in J.R. Smith's hotel room and he's just showing me that ass. What, like, what am I to do with this? And this is what I want you to imagine, Pat Riley at 77. Really? 77 is like Joe Biden's age. Yep. You can imagine Pat Riley. This is how we're doing it. Winning time, show time. We're going to get $15,000 fines because we're straight fucking. <laughs> Jimmy, fuck it.